Warning, this video contains spoilers for the story of the original Persona 5. Goro Akechi, a character who, well... I didn't mean to start an argument. I just can't help myself sometimes. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but this line... Akechi just summed himself up in two sentences. But did you know, there was a time when things were different, and Akechi was viewed very differently by the fanbase. A unique sector of the fanbase that I was part of. The sector that chose to spoil themselves on the game when it first came out in Japan, instead of waiting to first experience it in English. Now that we've reached this point in my playthrough, I can finally talk about it. This is the story of Goro Akechi's Wild Ride. The time is late 2015 and early 2016. The Persona fanbase has been eagerly awaiting the release of Persona 5, which has at this point been delayed twice. Atlas's marketing has already revealed a lot about the story and characters, most notably, that somebody sold out the protagonist and leader of the Phantom Thieves. As fans debated who it could be, they noticed that Goro Akechi had been given suspiciously less marketing than the rest of the party, even though the box art and general genre savviness made it clear he would join eventually. This made him the most obvious candidate, but fans didn't want such a simple answer. Fast forward to September 2016 and Persona 5 releases in Japan, fans begin streaming it, and hackers dive into the game's code. I'm going to go through what happened next in rough chronological order, but I'd like to stress this is a from the outside looking in perspective. All this happened on 4chan, of which I am not a member. But here we go. The first thing to get leaked were the party members' cut-ins, and people realised that Akechi had some pretty sadistic looking ones. But then again, so do Yusuke and Makoto, that shouldn't imply anything suspicious. Then somebody leaked the ending cutscene, and Akechi wasn't in it. Then the boss list was data mined, and the name Goro Akechi appeared in there twice. Okay, that's pretty damning. But that too could have meant a lot of things. Fans wouldn't be convinced, not unless the next cutscene leaked just happened to be literal smoking gun evidence of Akechi's betrayal. Case closed. This is how your justice ends. Oh. The bad ending cutscene, or so people thought, definitively proved that Goro Akechi was indeed the traitor in the party, and fans were incredibly disappointed. After all, he was by far the most obvious choice. He was a detective, he'd been antagonistic towards the Phantom Thieves on TV for the whole story until that point. He had a classic light is not good bent to his outfit, and even use bless skills. And he had several similarities to one of Persona 4's twist villains. To fans, Atlas had promised them a mystery and went with the most painfully obvious solution. But then, something happened. Streamers got far enough into the game to have actual context on Akechi's betrayal. Then, his portrait started leaking, and fans realised that while Akechi being the traitor was expected, what was not expected was how, frankly, batshit insane he was. His over-the-top facial expressions and his voice actor having an absolute blast during his boss fight made fans forget their disappointment at the obvious twist and relish in the absolute insanity and hamminess that was Goro Akechi. At this point, he was well on his way to becoming a major internet meme. He just needed one final push, something so massive so meme-worthy, unlike anything seen before. And that push came with one word. Oh, am I mistaken? I thought I heard something about delicious pancakes. P 
pancakes. It was at this point that people who actually understood Japanese started to weigh in, and translations of the game's story started coming. And from there, people found out that Goro Akechi got caught as the traitor because of pancakes. It's such a bizarre statement out of context, but in context, it not only makes perfect sense, it's also a serious plot point. And the sheer absurdity of that is what made Goro Akechi explode onto the internet meme scene. Well, that and the LOL 2 Goros incident, where a 4chan poster shared screenshots of the cognitive Akechi scene from Shido's palace with no context. It is now late 2016, Persona 5's English release is on the horizon, and those not dodging spoilers cannot get enough of Akechi. You can't walk two steps in this fanbase without running into an Akechi pancakes meme. At this point, there are really only two opinions on Akechi. All hail our pancake meme lord, and... STOP POSTING ABOUT Akechi. But then, April 2017 rolls around. The game comes out in English, and it's a lot more successful than the fans or most analysts predicted. This game goes mainstream in a way that the Persona franchise never has before, and as a result, a large sector of the fanbase now has not even heard of the Goro Apocalypse or any of the memes. They are experiencing the character of Goro Akechi entirely blind. And from this, we get Goro Akechi Phase 2 as people are now judging him based entirely on the context of the story, untainted by memes. Also, the people who followed the Japanese release and memed on him generally didn't know much of the language, and so this was their first time seeing what their meme lord was actually like. And at this point, opinions evolved to more closely resemble what they are today. From my casual outside observations on the fandom, I can divide opinions on Akechi into three broad categories. Category 1 are the fans who like Akechi. This is further split into 1A and 1B. 1A fans are the Akechi did nothing wrong group. They believe that Akechi was really just a victim in all of this that his circumstances, particularly those that led to him getting his powers, something we'll see later in the game, and him being under Shido's thumb mean that he didn't have much of a choice other than to be a villain. These fans also tend to blame Shido for all the murders. Akechi was just a tool he used. Category B, on the other hand, like Akechi in a love-to-hate sense. They don't sympathise with any of the things he's done, but they find him enjoyable to watch as an absolutely bonkers antagonist. This category resembles and has some overlap with the people who enjoyed Akechi for the memes in the pre-release. Then there is Category 2. These are the fans who don't like Akechi, based on his actions in story. They believe that, despite being under Shido's orders, he did approach Shido willingly to offer his services, and he displays a very sadistic side in battle and while talking about his past victims. Their opinions resemble those of some of the thieves in story, such as Haru not forgiving Akechi for killing her father despite his tragic circumstances, or Ryuji refusing to forgive Akechi at all. Given that the Phantom Thieves have polarised reactions in-universe, the writers may have intended Akechi's actions to have been debatable, and so either this or Category 1A would be a valid reaction in their minds. But then there is Category 3. These are the fans who dislike Akechi for out-of-story writing reasons. Put simply, they reached this point in the story and came to feel Akechi was badly written. The biggest thing these fans take issue with is his confidant being automatic in the vanilla game. Since the player never has to go out of their way to bond with him, 
All of those statements Morgana makes about Akechi not really hating Joker and always valuing their bond ring a bit hollow. Making matters worse is that his confidant is simply not all that well written either. It mostly consists of him dumping his backstory on you with no prompting. There's also that scene in Shido's palace where he suddenly gives an aside to the audience about how he was an unwanted child. Many believe this was just a cheap attempt at eliciting sympathy before you fought him that, again, rang hollow. A lot of these fans take issues with the way some of the thieves, particularly Arn, are very quick to forgive Akechi for what he did, despite the narrative not painting him as particularly remorseful, as I mentioned earlier. Some also took issue with how obvious the betrayal twist was. And the scene right after Akechi's betrayal, where he and Shido exposit the entire story of how they met and began working together. In my opinion, this is some of the most awkward writing in the vanilla story. Even within the confidant though, Akechi's vanilla rank 8 was especially disliked. Not only having Joker understand Akechi so much better from attempted murder, but also making no sense from a plot standpoint since Akechi's not even talking to the real Joker. Between these varied interpretations, Akechi went from a meme lord to the biggest controversy magnet in the Persona 5 fanbase. A character you couldn't mention without sparking massive debates. Akechi did, however, continue to top Japanese popularity polls, leading to a lot of extra appearances in the Persona 5 anime, which only angered his detractors even more. Some say Akechi is genuinely more popular in Japan due to different cultural perceptions surrounding illegitimate children. But it could also be that Akechi's detractors are a vocal minority and a lot of the fanbase thinks he's just fine. Even if they were though, debates among said vocal minority raged on for a while until the game got on in years and fans moved on. And then there was the announcement of Royal, an updated re-release just like Persona 4 Golden and Persona 3 FES before it. Many fans saw this coming, and by far the most common assumption for Royal added content was making Akechi playable longer. And given Akechi's fans, many expected that Atlas would go the obvious route of having him survive Shido's palace and have a redemption arc. This sparked the powder keg debates once again, as all of those who believed Akechi's actions were not justified, or who simply hated his writing, or hated how popular he was, were against his return. So then Royal actually hit, and what it did for Akechi was different to what many expected. For one, they made his confidant manual rather than automatic, and this already redeemed Akechi to many of his former detractors, as now the player has to go out of their way to bond with him, making Morgana's statements before their fight a lot more meaningful. But on top of that, Akechi's new confidant is vastly better written than the old one. The few backstory dumps it has are more enlightening than they were before, such as revealing that his mother was a sex worker, but they also come far more organically than in the original. The new confidant gives far more insight into who Akechi is as a person, mentioning that he lives alone, that he likes checking out popular cafes, that he enjoys light gun games and had a childhood desire to be a hero. You didn't get any of this in the vanilla confidant, as being intertwined with the story, it was almost entirely exposition. Akechi would just show up, say whatever the plot needed him to, and leave. Royal also, to the surprise of fans, didn't go down the cliched redemption arc route with Akechi, even giving him some more smug love-to-hate moments like his new rank 8. Because of this, Royal redeemed Akechi for a lot of people, regardless of where they stood on him before, and I'm happy to say I'm one of those people. I used to very firmly be a Category 3. As of Royal, I am now a Category 1B. I lean more in the love-to-hate direction, but I think Akechi is far better written, 
and his moments of sympathy in the story feel a lot more earned than they used to. The only problem I still have is that every story scene that used to be in a catchy rank up is still there, and boy do they stick out like a sore thumb compared to his added contents. It would have been hard to remove or rewrite these without severely destabilizing the vanilla plot, so I see why they kept them. And in a way, them still existing is a good thing, as it makes Akechi's new writing stand out as that much better. And that's all I have to say about Goro Akechi's Wild Ride, from a meme lord, to a controversy magnet, to a more generally accepted character in the re-release. But while we're on the subject of Akechi, I'd like to go over the non-standard game over for failing Shido's Palace's deadline, because it's a little bit weird. Akechi comes with some police officers to arrest Joker in LeBlanc. The fact that Akechi says the game is over, and then it cuts to the same Velvet Room death screen as typical game overs, or the other missed deadlines where Akechi kills Joker, heavily implies that Akechi succeeded in murdering him while in police custody this time. A disturbing thought, but even more disturbing is the fact that this still happens even after you beat him in Shido's palace. This could just be an oversight, or a sign of something more sinister going on. I'll leave that to your imagination. So, I'd like to know in the comments, where do you stand on Akechi? If you played the original game, did your opinion on him change in Royal or not? Were you also there for Goro Akechi's Wild Ride and the Pancake Meme Apocalypse? If so, I'd like to hear your stories from that time. I'll leave you there, and I'll see you next time, as Akechi's vanilla storyline might be over, but Joker's isn't by a long shot. Persona 5 Royal will continue.